Hey guys, Bobby here with yet another gimbal review test video, this time telling you everything you need to know about the Zhiyun Crane 3 Lab. So in this video, I wanna give you the brief overview of the important facts on the Crane 3, share my first impression on the unit itself, and then get into the five things that I love about it, as well as the five things that I really don't love. And hopefully that information will help you decide if it's the right gimbal for you. And I'll be showing you some behind the scenes footage shot on the Crane 3 from a short film set so that you can see real world use of this thing. The Zoom Crane 3 is priced at $899, though I have seen it go on sale for a bit cheaper at times. It claims a max weight limit of 10 pounds and a battery life of seven hours or so. It weighs 4.2 pounds and it can control a variety of camera functions. It comes with the gimbal, one set of batteries with a charger, a base plate with lens support, and a variety of cables that all serve different purposes. The last gimbal I reviewed was the Zoom Nebel Lab, so my first impressions of this were not as shocking as I was already used to the new design of the Crane 3. While it is on the bigger side, it doesn't strike me as too large, and the build quality seems like a step up from the Weeble Lab. It's a mix of plastic and metal, and while I might prefer all metal, that certainly adds to the weight, so I do see the thought behind using some plastic throughout this model. Now that's all out of the way, let's really dive into this thing, starting with five things that I love about the Zenium Crane 3 Lab. First up is the design as it relates to different modes. Now this new design of the Crane Gimbal allows you to easily switch between upright mode and underslung mode. And on past gimbals, I would need to slowly rotate the gimbal upside down and wait for the motors to kind of register that I was making that move. And then of course I need to do the same thing on the way back. And it was always a hassle that didn't always work for me. Now with this, you can instantly switch between these two modes without needing to engage the motors. And underslung mode itself feels amazing on this gimbal. The weight is well balanced and the back handle gives you much better control than if you were doing the same thing on the Crane 2 or the Ronin S or something with just one stop. Second is the motor locks, which I think may be the best addition to this recent lineup of gimbals. There is a motor lock for each axis, which when you flip the switch, locks the axis at its resting place. This allows you to fold it up quickly and easily and to know that you can safely transport it without risking damage to the motors. Perhaps the better use of the motor locks is that it makes balancing the gimbal incredibly easy. Both this and the Weeble Lab are by far the easiest gimbals that I've ever balanced, and I've balanced a lot of them. It took only a couple minutes from opening the box and having all the access locked except for the one that I needed unlocked was a big part of that. The third thing that I love about this gimbal is the weight limit. Now since moving off of the original Ronin, we have flown mirrorless cameras almost exclusively and I haven't actually had a DSLR mounted to a gimbal in a long time. But just for kicks, I loaded it up with my 5D Mark III and the 50 millimeter and it handled it with ease. After that, I actually tested out flying the 70 200 and the weight actually didn't seem to be an issue. It was more the fact that it was so front heavy, which there are ways to get around that, but I didn't have any of them. Now I still plan to fly my mirrorless cameras, but we're always toying with the idea of moving camera system. So it's nice to know that we can kind of future-proof ourselves to a certain extent. Fourth on the list are all the dedicated buttons throughout the gimbal. Now I have never liked having a series of click patterns to switch modes or control aspects of the gimbal or the camera. And the Zoom Crane 3 Lab really takes that stuff away. Because there's so much realty on this new design, there are dedicated buttons for different modes, as well as different camera settings that you might want to control. And there's also a zoom trigger on the back handle, which works great. Lastly is the addition of the permanent back handle. Now the handle itself doesn't feel cheap, but it is part of the gimbal that is plastic. However, on the Weeble Lab, you might remember one of my biggest complaints was needing to switch the tripod base to either be the bottom handle or the top back handle. And that is really solved with the addition of the permanent back handle. So those are my five things that I love about this thing, but a few other quick things that didn't quite make the cut are the joystick, which feels great to me and is the perfect amount of response, as well as the ability to connect your phone to the gimbal, to use it as a monitor with 1080p feed, which is nice, and to access some cool features and controls with the gimbal. However, I see a lot of that stuff is more of a cool feature to play with than an actually practical thing that I would use often. The camera controls are just something that I see as a little bit more of a gimmick, though I'm sure they work. 
And the 1080p feed to the phone is a great little resource, especially in a pinch, but it does lag a little bit and I'd rather use my monitor. Unfortunately, as with most things, the Xeon Crane 3 Lab is not perfect. And it's now time to go over five things that I hate about this gimbal. One of the things that I thought would for sure be my top things that I love is the design. I praise the Weeble Lab for its design and the portability that it offered. And the portability is no different with the Crane 3. It feels incredibly portable, especially given its size. And while some aspects of the design are great, overall, I think they missed the mark with this and there are two major flaws that I've found while using it. First up is that it sits incredibly low to the ground and there's not much of a handle aside from the back handle. So it's incredibly hard to pick up from the ground. Add to this that the back handle is made of plastic and it would certainly worry me a little bit if I was approaching the max weight limit of this thing. Additionally, while I love the permanent back handle, the bottom handle is simply non-existent outside of the tripod base, which means you are essentially forced to use the back handle with one hand instead of having both hands on the bottom as it's just a little too tight. Different people like to hold the gimbal different ways and different shots call for different movements. And I see this as a huge oversight in the design. Add to that that the back handle itself forces you to hold the gimbal a little further away from your body. And that's gonna tire out your arms and your back much quicker. Second on my list of things that I don't like actually goes hand in hand with the bottom handle problem. And that is that once again, all the accessory attachment areas are on the left side. Now I'm left-handed, I hold the gimbal more towards my left side and I need to have my monitor on the right side. And I bring this up with almost every gimbal, but the lack of the bottom handle space on this one also means that even if I wanted to, I could not really clamp a monitor in the right place for me. Now the Crane 3 does have the drop rear motor to give you easy access to the view of your camera screen, but not all screens are high quality, looking at you Sony, and I pretty much prefer to use my monitor for accurate focus and color in all scenarios. Third on this list is not specific so much to the Crane 3 as it is Zoom in general, and that is that the app looks nice, but it is absolute garbage in my opinion. In fact, I want to love the easy camera controls right from the back handle, but for the life of me, I cannot get them working. I'm assuming it's due to a firmware upgrade of the Crane, which try as I might, I simply cannot get the firmware to install on the Crane itself. I have it downloaded with no issues, but it simply won't push to the gimbal. And this is the exact same issue that I had with the Weeble Lab, which I was never able to resolve. Fourth on my list is the price. And this is of course opinion based, but I think they should have come out matching the Ronin S, which seems to be their main competitor. Both the Crane 3 and the Ronin S have advantages and disadvantages when compared. And I don't think that there's a clear winner, but when that is the case, price often plays a larger role. And while I wouldn't say that this is overpriced for what it offers, I do think that they might lose sales simply based on price. The fifth and final thing that I really dislike about the Crane 3 is incredibly small, but just like the Weeble Lab, everything felt well-made and thoughtful, except randomly the back wheel on the rear handle feels incredibly cheap. It works, but I would not be surprised if it stopped working or if it physically broke at some point. So there it is guys, an unbiased review of the Xeon Crane 3. There are some great features offered by this and I was definitely pleased with the footage that came from it. Using it was generally pleasant, but there are some flaws that I hope they address. If you have any questions about this gimbal or anything at all, please leave it in the comments below. And as always, I'd love to have you like this video and subscribe for more videos like it in the future.